So just to uh, give you your lineups, we've got a uh, James Montgomery in goal for AFC Fylde. We've got a back four of Luke Burke, Neil Byrne, Alex Whitmore and Scott Duxbury. It's a, a midfield trio of Lewis Montrose, Ryan Crosdale and Danny Filiskirk. And then up top it's Nick Horton with Matty Cosillo and Danny Rowe leading the line this afternoon. On the bench for the coasters it's Kyle Jameson, uh, Jordan Williams, Dan Bradley, Mark Yates and Kurt Willoughby. And then lining up for Woking FC this afternoon it is goalkeeper Craig Ross, uh, Josh Casey, Jack Cook, Manny Perry, Ben Gering, Toby Edser, Kane Ferdinand, Sean Donnellan, Dave Tarpey, Tyreek Johnson and Ibrahim Nete. On the uh, bench for the cards it's Sam Howells, Nathan Collier, Godfrey Poku, Jake Hyde and Paul Hodges. And Montgomery being absolutely crowded by yellow shirts at the moment as the uh, the ball is whipped in across the bar aiming for Tarpey who does get a foot to it but it's not clean and Neil Byrne now collects the ball in his own box to make a break for it so Byrne now striding out into his own half finds Cosolo ahead of him Cosolo being hunted down here by Tyreek Johnson Cosolo to Horton Horton tries to get down onto his right foot as well to skip past the man and aiming for the back and it just goes over the air uh, the crossbar there but uh, I'll tell you what I won't judge him for doing that after what he did on uh, Hartlepool on Tuesday I think he's been now comes out but he's uh, immediately set upon by Mete showing that dominating force that he can be Montrose cuts across Johnson to knock it out for another throwing but this is the uh, the danger that Woken have got they are powerful they're strong and they uh, will pressurise you and I think everybody seems to want to do that to AFC Fard at the moment kind of constrict them and not let them play as uh, Ebda comes through the middle now he skips past Montrose and it's a uh, a heel that's caught, and this is a dangerous position for uh, AFC Fylde. Just on the edge of the Tarpey takes a shot, it bends round, and it's in. Dave Tarpey comes back to haunt AFC Fylde once again. The man who scored four goals here for Maidenhead, as we've been mentioning, as he did on Tuesday night against Chesterfield, sets the ball down, picture perfect in the bottom corner. It's Woking 1, AFC Fylde 0. bring Woking out and nutmegs on Alex Whitmore brought down but the referee has waved play on so Byrne will now bring the coasters out Byrne to Horton Horton stood up against two players Danny Rowe on this right hand side like he was on Tuesday cuts in onto his left back onto his right a ball across the box and it was Byrne that was waiting there at the back post good build up from the foul number nine it's gone out for a corner plenty of players in white shirts looking to get the running on this one as Horton plays the ball in towards Rowe it goes through tries to find Montrose but it's well dealt with by Woking eventually and it'll be Mete who brings this out on this left hand side now he's got plenty of space to run into but he may have just overran that one just a little bit um, to get back into this game as uh, Casey is across to take this free kick for Woking it's aiming for Parry in the middle and out of nowhere it is Kane Ferdinand who's uh, grabbed this one he's just leaped a little bit higher than the foul defence and they've given a woke in a second so <laughs> great through ball from Whitmer finds Burke at the edge of the box of Sacross and it's Danny Rowe but well blocked by Gehring and it's out as far as Montrose another chance of foul as Horton now looks to float this ball in towards Danny Rowe. It's Cosolo at the back post. Cosolo towards Crowsdale. Oh, Parry gets that one away. Duxbury now finds Cosolo once again. Cosolo onto his right foot, but well dealt with by Ferdinand. Woken to trying to get this away as quick as he can, but Duxbury skips past Cook. Can he find Phyllis Kirk? And it's out by Gehring once again. Woking just surviving at the minute as the constant pressure from AFC Fowl is cracked up as Horton comes once again. He finds Phyllis Girk in the middle. Horton he goes for it. A great one too between Horton and Phyllis Girk. Just a little bit off balance as the uh, foul number 27. He just puts it over the bar but on the floor. And Whitmore with the ball up towards Phyllis Girk. Phyllis Girk with his head on it but it is going to be Edzer who gets there first intercepted by Montrose Montrose literally dragging his team forward and wins the foul for the home side and mm. Ferdinand there who seemed to put his leg into the face of Lewis Montrose a bit of needle beforehand but nothing that was you know meant that 
require that kind of backlash then, was it? It's a bit unnecessary, really. I think they kind of come together. I think there's an initial foul by Ferdinand that brought Montrose on his way down, um, which ultimately uh, gave Exeter Fall the, the foul. Ferdinand obviously didn't seem to like that, and they've had a bit of a tangle together. So it's going to the uh, to the book, but he's going to have to be uh, a bit careful in what he does for the rest of this half, otherwise it could be a, an early shower for the number eight. Looks well, like it'll be Horton to step over, duck through with the ball into the middle, Montrose on the end of it, and it's a goal! Instant impact from Lewis Montrose, the captain, back in the squad today for his first league start of the season. Jumps high, gets on the end of that Duxbury free kick, and brings one back for Ersie Fylde. So it's Montgomery's long kick is well taken down by Horton. He skips past two players, plays the ball into the path of Kosolo. Can Fyle get a second here? Kosolo steaming into the box, takes a left foot. Oh, oh. And, and all it needed from Danny Filiscoe was a foot onto it, and that would have been nestled in the back of the net as well. But it's another opportunity for AC Fylde, and the coasters have really got the tails up now. Field. Now to Kosolo. Kosolo back to Burn. Burn got anybody to aim for. Can Montrose engineer something here? Bradley, nice little interchange with Crowsdale. Crowsdale keeps the ball going, but just a bit of a late challenge there. I don't think he got the uh, the ball, to be fair. I think it was a, a bad challenge, but probably not one that, that warrants the flooding of Warwick. So, uh, brings down Donnellan, but the referee set waves play on as Duxbury comes forward now. A bit of confusion between himself and Horton. Means Cook can pull the ball away and it's now Tarpey on this right hand side and a left leg was in by Ryan Crowsdale already on a booking and uh, unfortunately this is going to be a second for the fouled number eight and a red card does follow and uh, you know what I think he'd be, he's very unlucky to be in this situation that was Donnellan now checks back into Ferdinand. Plenty of space for the Woking number eight as uh, Casey now comes from the left back position, finds Johnson on this left hand side. Johnson, can he get the ball into the box for Woking? Manages to hit Hyde and it's a third for Woking. You, you said it, Luke, you know, it was either going to be one or the other, either going to be uh, an equaliser of a fire or Woking and we'll go on and get a third. And Hyde, who uh, has really grabbed his chance there, the number nine for Woking. Lurking there right on the edge of the six yard box. A great ball in from Johnson, and it is a third for the away side. And uh, as Woking come striding forward with Cook and Edsa on this right hand side, um, I don't know if there's too much reason to slow the game down as he gets the better of Duxbury. Uh, Duxbury takes him down, and it's going to be a penalty to Woking, and things go back to worse for the coach. So uh, it's going to be high to take this penalty as he sets the ball down once again so the number nine who grabbed Wokins third Jack Hyde steps up and puts it away for Wokins fourth he uh, celebrates with those fans in the uh, south end who've made the long trip up from Surrey we're in Bradley's from 11 o'clock this morning <laughs> and uh, might be in there till 11 o'clock tonight judging on uh, this performance